Customer support conversation analyzer takes in a conversation that takes place during a customer support session along with its metadata and creates a, a detailed JSON report along with an HTML so it can be uh, reviewed very easily and visually. And we will be uh, doing this using uh, structured outputs from OpenAI. We have a very detailed uh, Pydantic models defined for uh, structured outputs to create this report. Uh, let's quickly run this and see how it works. We have a sample conversation, but this can be, uh, you know, from this can be retrieved from a database. This conversation has customer data, and once we run it, we're going to see that the reports are generated. Uh, it's going to be the exact same report, but let's go ahead and delete the HTML and the report. By the way, the, we're going to be reviewing the code file, the source code, but you will be able to download it from my Patreon. The link will be in the description and in a comment. Okay, we have run it, and we are seeing the analysis result, results. Uh, the support analysis report is saved along with ticket ID, timestamp, severity, business impact, uh, along with uh, an action plan and uh, customer sentiment. And all we have to do is just open this HTML is generated dynamically. Just open it up in your browser and it gives you the severity of the situation, a product area, churn risk with 40% SLA breach risk. So that's important. Customer sentiment, uh, revenue at risk, customer lifetime value, which tier of account that the customer is, action plan, immediate escalation to engineering. It also gives you deadline and effort, how long it may take. Priority immediate, the follow-up with the customer support, 72 hours that the customer support should follow up, and then another follow-up for comp compensation review with account management. And department workload is engineering, uh, it says two hours, customer support one hour, account management one hour. Of course, this is a bit of a dummy example. In the case of your example, you would probably want a very detailed system message explaining the workloads and engineering timeframes that uh, that might require that might be required for different types of tasks. So uh, this is how it works. Let's go ahead and review the code. But like I said, you can download it from my Patreon as well. We are having all our imports in the beginning. It's very convenient to use structured outputs with Pydantic models. Uh, Pydantic models uh, are just classes which define the output schema that you're looking for, including its uh, their types. Here we are deferring a sever severity model with critical, high, medium, and low uh, categorizations. We are defining product areas for categorizing issues, such as if it's related to billing, technical. In this case, this ex example conversation was technical. Account management feature requests security related performance and optimization. And here we have a model for tracking customer sentiment metrics. Here's the customer sentiment, which is going to be a float. Uh, this field descriptors actually are sent to the OpenAI API. So these are great to actually explain if additional details if you want, such as the fact that the customer sentiment can be from negative one to one. Frustration level can be one, which is the lowest, and five, which is high. Churn risk is from zero to one. Probability of customer churn. Model for tracking business impact of support issues, uh, such as uh, what's revenue, potential revenue loss in USD for the customer. Account tier, customer's account tier. Subscription value, annual subscription value. Uh, renewal date, previous incidents, and customer lifetime value. All these are actually, some of these are apparent in the metadata, such as the account tier and the name of the corporation, the name of the customer's company. And we have another model for defining action items to resolve the issue. Action types, such as escalation, refund, technical, fix, follow up. You can actually enumerate these as well as we have done up here. But in the, here, in this case, we are just dealing with it. Uh, more generally, a little bit just a description. But remember that you can actually use enum fields for this, just as we have used for product area and severity. Priority, again, this can uh, one to five. 
assigned department, department responsible for action. This can be enumerated as well. Estimated effort hours, deadline hours, required manager approval, conversation analysis. This is the main model that we are going to be sending, the ticket ID, timestamp, uh, product area takes in the product area, which we have defined up here. Um, severity takes in the severity class we have the, defined. And uh, secondary issues is just a list of additional issues that may be identified. Technical components is separate. Sentiment take, takes in the model we did define, so, so does business suggested actions and auto-resolvable, whether the issue can be resolved automatically, similar ticket patterns, and SLA breach risk, which is from zero to one. We initialize our OpenAI client and we define a function to analyze the support conversation, which is going to take in the color conversation text and customer metadata. So we are uh, going to dynamically take these out of the JSON. You can actually paste the entire JSON if you want it, just convert it to string. This analyzes the customer support conversation. We just make a call to GPT-4. You don't need to specify the date anymore. And we have the system message, which is pretty simple. Analyze the customer support conversation and extract key issues in their severity. So this is pretty simple, but you can, uh, because the models actually are self-explanatory, but feel free to expand on the system message. And then we pass in the customer metadata and the conversation as a user message and response format is set to the conversation analysis, which brings all the previous models together, right? As we, have, as we have seen, and we are returning the completions, just pay attention that when we are using structured output with Fidantic, we are using the dot beta dot chat completions dot parse. And when we receive the response, we apply the dot parse method and we will return a Fidantic object. And then here we have the generate support dashboard, which is going to take in the conversation analysis uh, and generate aggregate metrics for support team dashboard. Initialize the dashboard structures as a list, which we're going to actually have as a JSON object. So we go over each one of the analysis and fill in uh, the priority, for example, churn risk uh, and uh, department workload, all of the necessary fields. And this is just going to return the dashboard. Generate action plan is going to generate structured action plan based on the conversation analysis. And here we also use the, uh, the return Pydantic schema to fill in the action plan. And add automation suggestions for auto-resolvable issues as well and return that. And now we're going to now load the conversation as data and now format the conversation here as conversation text for each one of the speakers. And here we are also retrieving the customer metadata. Once we load it, these are going to appear as keys, right? It's almost like a dictionary. And then we are going to analyze the support conversation. And when we have the analysis, we're going to generate the action plan and the dashboard. Then we kind of compile the comprehensive report from the analysis, uh, as we have seen. And then here we have the generate HTML report, which is going to be an F string of an HTML document using uh, Daisy UI and Tailwind. Uh, yeah. And we have just minimal CSS styling here. This is just going to, uh, this is pretty much for the design of the web page. Uh, as we have seen, it also has dark mode and light mode. And here uh, at the bottom for each particular like such as the analysis results severity, um, we are inputting the necessary fields from the analysis. Here we the product area, for example, we are retrieving it all from the generated report, uh, analysis results, result, customer sentiment, and the rest, business impact, action plan, department workload. So this is just a string that we are actually filling in with the variables. And then we are then we are saving it to file, and then the generate the action rows helper function generate HTML table rows for actions, uh, which is right here action plan. So here we loop over the actions, and then we create a list or the table for these necessary actions, and then we return that uh, and generate the workload card. So these are just separate helper functions to additionally supplement. Uh, the HTML. And here we are actually saving the full report. And at the end, we are printing the full summary as well. 
and just call the HTML, generate HTML report. I hope you found this useful. So this can be, so this is pretty modular and you can actually modify it. This is uh, quite a complex structure, but there's no reason why it can't be more complex or more details uh, detailed uh, suiting your situation. Like I said, you can download the code files from my Patreon. And when you do become a patron, uh, you not only get access to this particular project, but over 350 other projects. And if you're enjoying my uh, content, you can actually see all my projects at my website, echohive.live. You can watch the free videos for each one of them, such as for computer control, uh, Genesis Mine, and many others. Here I'll scroll uh, for a few so you can see what type of projects there are. And when you become a patron, you can just simply click on any one of these projects, uh, download code bu button right here, like such as memory layers for LLM apps. And it'll take you to Patreon and you'll be able to quickly download this, uh, modify it, make it your own. Uh, when you become a patron, you'll also get access to my 1000X Cursor course, which is 27 chapters, 15 hours of content, building full project files from scratch. The first two chapters are free to watch, and you can preview each chapters for uh, two minutes. So take a look at that as well. And if you'd like to get in touch with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can become an architect member to attend uh, weekly AMA meetings on Sundays, or you, I have Patreon tiers for consulting. If you need help with your projects or just want to get in touch with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Thank you again and take care.